A recent poll by the New Orleans Crime Coalition says that crime and public safety are the most important issues facing the city. We probably didn't need a poll to know that. In fact, violent crimes and homicides to carjackings and stabbings have all gone up compared to the last year. This morning, we want to have a conversation about what can be done to combat the issue with two people who are uh, able to do something about it. Uh, New Orleans City Council President Helena Moreno and uh, Vice President uh, of the Council, J.P. Morrell. Thank you both for coming in. And, and we've been talking about this. The, the, the report that came out from the New Orleans Crime Coalition said, I, I think what everybody knew, crime is the number one issue. I mean, over the 4th of July holiday weekend, we had five carjackings. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll say this, Eric. I, what J.P. and I are, are constantly emphasizing is that to solve this major problem, First, the leadership of the city has to admit that there's a problem. That, that, that You're talking is, about the mayor's office. Is, yes, and, uh, and we're t also talking about the, the, the leadership of the NOPD as well. This is a crisis. Let's be very frank here. We haven't had this level of murders since before Hurricane Katrina. We are number one per capita in murders out of any city in this country right now. So this is a crisis, and when we're talking about a crisis, it means that it must be dealt with urgency every single day. And we have to take a look at, of course, long-standing problems, no doubt about that. And we're looking at some of those long-term solutions. But what's on fire right now has to do with manpower shortages with NOPD and also the, the very long response times for calls for service. And that's what we really need to be focused uh, in, uh, in on. And, and the council has a series of different options and plans and things that we have funded, but unfortunately, action is just not happening. So, so what can you guys do about this? Well, we've already done things. For example, the council funded a million dollars to New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation to improve recruitment, which is abysmal. Um, previously, for every 5,000 applications filed in, only 100 people took the civil service exam because there was no follow-up by police department recruitment to get people to take the exam, take the physical test to be applicable, be hired. Well, Why is that happening? Well, we don't know. The Police and Justice Foundation came up with a plan to increase recruiting by hiring professional recruiters. The council funded that plan weeks ago, but the administration will not sign the MOU to start the increased recruitment. What we've seen time and time again is the council will come up with solutions. We passed a multi-point crime plan mm -hmm. in February and put it out there and said, here's the crime plan. And both the mayor and police chief said, not necessarily we have our own plan. We've diligently gone through that plan and implemented pieces of it. But every single instance in which administrative action is required, both the chief lateral hiring of mm -hmm. uh, the president and I've spoke about lateral hiring since last fall. All it requires, the chief can do lateral hiring now. All it requires is to come up with a plan. He's been talking about a plan since February. If we can't use lateral hiring to hire veteran police mm -hmm. officers into the department, not only are we not filling recruit classes, but we're missing the opportunity to recruit veteran officers from other departments. And I, I think people are asking, the question, why aren't you guys screaming from the rooftops and saying, look, we have a problem yeah. here and something's got to be done. And I'll say this, we feel like we're screaming from we the rooftops. From the rooftops pretty and, much and, daily. And, and it's just, it's like, it's like a wall. It's like screaming into a void, screaming, screaming at a wall. I mean, for example, we're down now to 983 police officers at this time. And that means uh, maybe 800 something, 900 something on the actual street. No, it's way less than it's that. It's actually less, way than, less, that. Way less yeah. than that. But, but, okay. but what's even worse is that we're projected to have under 900 police officers by the end of 2022. So when you're looking at a department that's funded roughly to have 1,400 police officers, you can't operate at the same with half of the amount of police officers. We have said to the chief, you need to reorganize the police department because that's what law enforcement expert, experts have told us need to be done within the NOPD and outside of the NOPD. That means potential consolidation of precincts. That means consolidating uh, detectives so that you can better respond to calls for service. Well, and, and one of your fellow council members, uh, Oliver Thomas, suggested bringing in the National Guard. A lot of people said that was not the right idea. Maybe bring in more state police. Is that a possibility? We've well, been talking, well, go ahead. It's, it's challenging. I mean, first off, 
Mm. In order for state police to be brought in, the mayor would have to request to be brought in, and to date, she has, she, not, she has not requested to do that. Have but you guys asked her to do that? We have, we have weighed in on the possibility of state police patrolling the highways in particular, because I think the council president calculated 5,000 lost man hours more per that. year, more than that, for NOPD responding to highway traffic accidents. Whether or not the NOPD should be on the streets of the city, based on what's currently going on at the state police on the state level, that may not be the best fit, but I will tell you that it's been very challenging. Michael Harrison, our former police chief, went to Baltimore. He's really tackled that problem of manpower shortage head on by, by increasing the amount of civilians hired by the police department to take over administrative tasks that you don't need police officers doing. When you brought up the 982 number and how many of that is equal to street people, well, you have to take in three factors. One, they count reservists and they count recruits in that number. So that okay. number is absolutely lower than it's supposed to be. But furthermore, the white shirts, the guys you see in the white shirts mm -hmm. who, are, uh, who are rank, they don't patrol the streets anymore. One big difference between Orleans Parish versus Jefferson and St. Bernard and Plaquemines is that in Jefferson Parish, every single deputy sheriff responds to a call for service. Joe LaPinto will tell you, if I'm driving home and I'm closest to a car wreck, I pull over and do the car wreck. In NOPD, once you hit administrative rank, you don't respond to calls for service. So when you've got a top heavy department with you know, 50, 60, 70, maybe 100 people who are in rank, they're driving the few take home cars we have, but they're not necessarily responding well, to calls and, for service. And let me talk to you about this, because you mentioned traffic stops. I mean, you know, traffic accidents, things like that, need to be covered, they need police, but they don't need the, the very highly trained. Look, I, I know in front of my house me. there was an accident. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. There was an accident in front of my house. Uh, a, a uniformed officer sat out there for three hours, right. and, and right. the, the cop told me, this is wrong, they should have somebody else doing that. Uh, she wound up just directing traffic. 100%, so commissioned officers don't have to respond to accidents that don't have injuries. And so we actually have a, a group called on-site services that can respond to these types of accidents. The city council is willing to increase uh, the money spent toward these types of on-site services to respond to accidents. The problem is we can't seem to get uh, the city to put out a contract to bid this out for enhanced services. Again, is that the administration? Once again, we don't put out contracts. The city council doesn't put out, put out a contract contracts. like this. So it's either the NOPD or the city needs to put out this contract for enhanced services to respond to accidents. And what we've learned now is that there are companies that can also respond to accidents on the interstate, non-injury accidents. So once again, those are saved manpower hours, but unfortunately, once again, screaming into a void, screaming into the wall, uh, we're not seeing the urgency around getting these solutions done. Doesn't the administration see the, 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 the problem here? Because, I mean, I mean you're looking at, at crime is the number one issue by far. Satisfaction with, with the city, down. But, Satisfaction with the NOPD, down. But Eric, the problem you're seeing is that there has been an effort by the administration since the beginning of the year to deflect and downplay mm -hmm. crime is a problem in the city. More importantly, I'll give you an example. At our most recent council meeting, both Councilmember Thomas and I got into an argument with the police chief because he kept saying, well, crime's down, just murders are up. And we're like, wait a second. So I have to read off the stats to dispute mm -hmm. that. But it got so frustrating. We said the crime is going to be the highest since 92. And he, he said to us, well, there won't be as many murders as there were in 92. And Oliver and I both said, there's not as many right. people. Right. And it came down to a point where Councilman Thomas had to tell the chief, listen, chief, are you more likely to be shot now than you were in the 90s? And he took a pause and he goes, well, when you say it that way, yeah, you are more likely to be shot now than you were in 92 and 94. Because the per capita metric is what every city yep. uses, not how many you actually have, because obviously, New York has more crime by the numbers than we do, but it also has 16 times as many people. And, and, and when you talk about that, uh, uh, you, you know, th there's just got to be a way to get this administration moving. I mean, is there anything you guys can do? Well, I'll say this. It's like, I think the council's 
doing its part as far as funding th these initiatives and doing everything that we can to push our this administration. I mean, for God's sakes, we're ending up in court these days with this administration, and I would just urge the public to continue to, to do as well. Because it, it's, it's affecting the city, and I'm now since Katrina, we have never been able to get back over the 400,000 mark. We were well above that pre-Katrina, and, and there's just too many systemic problems well, here. I mean, you look at, generally speaking, the crime problem in the city and I think a lot of people feel like the city is more fixated on tourism than it is on dress the appearance of there not being crime rather than solving it and this weekend's a great example they were pulling 10 to 20 officers per district to the French Quarter at CBD during Essence Fest now that made the Essence Fest the safest place to be in the entire city but then there were individuals there was someone yesterday um, on the Legion Fields who got, who was, her car was devastated by a stolen car, vehicle fleeing, and they could not get an officer out there for hours. This is a car where someone was T-boned by a car, a person in a stolen vehicle. They're calling for help and there's no one to respond because when you pull that many officers from all the districts to the quarter, the rest of the city is less safe, mm -hmm. but the tourists are, and there is a, obsession in the city with being obsessed with appearances. It's the same reason why the administration keeps downplaying crime because they want to make sure that the nation doesn't see the city having a crime problem, even though the residents that are here obviously know that's true. All right, we're going to continue this conversation. Uh, tomorrow we're dealing with a crime problem. We're talking with uh, Michael Hecht of GNO Inc., who is talking about ways to solve this because this, this city is in trouble and it eventually will affect the economy. No doubt. And look, once again, there is absolutely low-hanging fruit that the administration and the leadership of the NOPD could do right now if they just understood the urgency of the crisis we're in. Well, well thank you guys for uh, pointing that out. All right, uh, thank you for coming in. Please come back again sometime. Absolutely. absolutely. All right, we'll be right back.